Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Play Majora's Mask. Okay, so we are in the ancient castle of Icona. We've got a pretty interesting little room here. First things first, you want to look to the north and see that there is a uh, little ledge with a switch on it. So we want to get over there using the conveniently placed Deku flower. Alright, so let's go on over there and push this thing down. As we do, you see that's going to open up the door on the other side. Now, from here, it kind of looks like we're screwed. There's not really a way to get back other than jumping in. But um, I'm just going to have you trust me on this. There's actually an invisible platform over here. As you can see, you can jump on it and uh, go across. But, of course, the big Skulltulas are always willing to be there in order to knock you off. So let's try this room again, then. And, of course, I'm pretty sure, yeah, the door does seal itself back. So you can't fall down or anything. All right, so now let's press the switch. And this time, make sure to take out the Skulltulas. I kind of forgot they were there. So uh, let's uh, shoot this one. And shoot that one. There we go. Now make our way across the invisible platform onto here. Then jump across the broken little platforms here. Jump across, and there is the door. Alright, now in here are some blue bubbles, which are really annoying. Uh, that's a blue bubble. Quick run. Don't let it curse you. If it comes after you, defend yourself to block it. Basically, what happens is if those guys run into you while their blue fire is up, they will jinx you and keep you from being able to use your sword, which is very annoying, but you can actually dissipate it rather quickly just by playing the Song of Storms. So you really don't have to worry about it too much. It's more of an inconvenience than anything. All right, now that we are up here, there are a couple things we want to do on the roof. You can see there's a crystal switch over there. Um, yeah, okay, I figured that guy was coming for me. Um, and then you can see there are some Deku flowers to fire on it and a heart piece over there on that ledge. We're going to get back to that in just a second, though. We're actually going to come over here. Okay, so uh, now we want to jump off this ledge and hop into the Deku flower. You can see there's a switch over there on the other side, so that's obviously where we're shooting to. So let's drop down and press it. Doing so will cause a block to move out of the way. You may not entirely know what that does for the time being, but what that does is actually drop a beam of light down into another room that we can use. So, did need to come up here first, for sure. So now let's make our way back up to the roof, and now we're going to go get that heart piece. Um, otherwise, because once you get the heart piece, there's really not a way to... Okay, well, never mind then. I'm going to have to get back up anyway. I did not see that coming at all. So, all right, we're going to go back through the castle and pretty much repeat the same steps. Get back up to the roof. I'll meet you there. All right, so now we're back up on the roof, and the uh, stupid Gways will probably still bother me, but whatever. I think they win the award for my most hated enemy, if you ask me. But, all right, this guy's probably going to come over here. Are you? Okay, I guess he doesn't want a piece, but anyway, uh, we're going to activate this crystal switch here by shooting an arrow, of course, which will cause uh, both the flames to go down. Now we need to jump out to the pillar, which can be a little bit uncomfortable, but um, it's still not too bad. Now we get into the flower here, shoot across, get into the flower here, and then finally shoot out over to the heart piece. This is what I was originally saying, why you would want to uh, get the heartbeat second, because once you get out here, there's no way back to get on the roof except to go through the castle again, which I ended up having to do anyway, but that's just unfortunate, I suppose. Okay, so now that we've got that, we're uh, pretty much done with the northern side. We're not going to have to go back through there again. Um, what we did do was move that block out of the way, which would cause a beam of light to actually appear towards the south side. So uh, this time we're going to take the southern door and sort of move on to the second half of the castle, I suppose. All right, now as we go through here, you can see there is a beam of light, which you can actually use to take out the floor master as well as that sunblock. So um, the light actually does pretty good in here. You can also take out the three little ones. That can be kind of hard to do, but it went all right there. Can't take out those ray deads with it, though, because they're too far away. But what you can do, of course, is still put on the Gibdo mask and... Watch them dance. Yeah, some of these guys actually do different varieties of dancing. That guy's still doing the ballerina spin. These guys are doing some sort of layback clapping motion, and this guy's doing that, that little Russian dance thing. I forgot what it's called, but uh, yeah, so. Uh, I, I don't know. I guess Redeads really aren't that creepy anymore, but uh, well, there you go. They've sort of lost their scare factor from Ocarina of Time. Uh, I didn't know they'd been practicing river dancing in their off time, but I guess that's just how it works. And then, of course, once we go into this room, we're going to encounter a familiar mini boss. This guy really just doesn't know when to give up, if you ask me. So, um, all right, this time we're going to take him out with ice arrows, because I'm pretty sure he actually repels fire arrows, but now that we pick these up, we can use them. Uh, that'll make it go a little bit quicker, and he also has a pretty cool little animation when he gets frozen there. 
So yep, yeah, it's literally exactly the same thing. He appears out of one of the four portals, then once he um, enters the second phase, he's going to, you know, go around the room like usual. He, he literally doesn't have any new tricks, so... Let's uh, shoot him here, and then wait for him to appear over here. Shoot him twice, and he's done for. Still easy as ever. I don't think this guy really ever gets difficult, but, you know, there you go. All right, so we finished off the Wizro once again. Now let's head on through the door and in here. Put on the Gibdo mask so these guys will dance for us. Interesting. Yeah, those are all three different varieties of dances they have, um, which I guess, you know, three is better than one, but it would have been cool if they, uh, some of them had some different ones, but um, <laughs> definitely not complaining about what we have. So now let's head up the stairs. And then as we go through this door, you can probably guess where this is going to lead us. That's right, we are back on the roof. Make sure not to fall down there because it will put you back um, pretty much just where we came from. Um, we want to come over to this side. You can see there is this little thing right here. If we check it with Tattle. Here, see? You always miss things like this. Take a look. The rocks are cracked here. So that may be sort of an indication that you would want to use bombs, but it turns out bombs actually aren't strong enough. This is where we're going to need that powder keg that I told you to get. So um, let's put it on and use it. Then I guess since I don't really feel like waiting, we can get our arrows out. Shoot it. And that will cause this to open. Now, if we drop down here, you can see that it's going to plop us back out in the middle of the main room. And uh, I guess we should... Actually, no, we don't need to because we can use the light to uh, kill the Rededs. They will um, start sort of walking towards you, but... There it goes. So you can use them to kill them in one hit, which is pretty cool. And now this will also let us go through the sunblock here. And then finally gets to the eastern section, which is pretty much the uh, final destination of this temple. Or, not temple, but castle, I guess. Alright, so now we can go through here. Check out this room. Pretty, uh, pretty ominous, you know, big long hallway with a giant throne at the end. Look how tall that is. So let's check it out. Oh, insolent one who has brought the unthinkable into a land as dark as Icona. My servants have fallen namelessly before the light that guides you. However, the darkness in which my servants live is, after all, fleeting. You shall see with your own eyes just what kind of thing true darkness really is. All right, so yeah, we've got kind of a boss battle here. We've got uh, these two. Oh, wow, caught him in midair. That was awesome. Uh, you see targeting methods while defending the unthinkable. What could that possibly be in a place as dark as this? So they kind of gave us a little hint here. These guys, they're kind of like dry bones in the Mario series. You can hit them as much as you want and uh, knock them down. Uh, even if you kill them both at the same time, you can see they just kind of lay here and nothing else really happens. The king kind of sits there on his throne. Then eventually they get back up. So um, what you need to do is actually get out the fire arrows. The game sort of gave us a little bit of a hint by having us look up here. You can see there are curtains. If you shoot them with fire arrows, it will cause them to burn up. Everyone is all surprised by that, apparently. And light shines through, which, of course, these guys don't really like. So what you can do is stand in the light, really, and uh, these guys will sort of leave you alone. They don't like to be here, apparently. And they will block your light, of course. Nope. Sometimes, anyway. Okay, anyway. Um, let's uh, shoot the second curtain here. Just might as well, I suppose. <laughs> and the king is distraught by this. I don't, I don't know. I guess he didn't know we had fire arrows, but whatever. So, All right, now this time when we fight these guys, we want to uh, take them out like we did before. A couple hits will do it. Then stand in the light and shine it on their little corpse that they lay behind. You can see that will cause it to disintegrate. And now we do the same with the other one. And there we go, taking care of both your servants, so... Uh-oh, now he's serious, he's gonna stand up and fight us himself. So this guy, you really don't need to treat him too much differently than you did the other ones, you still just want to get up close and pretty much hit him with your sword attacks. He does like to jump around a lot though, and he also has a few other attacks like shooting out the, uh, the breath like that, but hit him a few times and he's done for, he's really not too tough. Then shine the light on him and this battle is over. You're blocking me, get out of the way, I can still get him. 
B -b blocking you. The reason he beat us is because you were so feeble. Don't blame this on me. What? Just try saying that again to my bony face. Feeble, 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 feeble. Shut up already! Uh, don't look at me. I was once called the best swordsman in all of Icona. The greatest swordsman in all of Icona? You? Feeble. <laughs> These guys are hilarious. Draw your weapon. Huh? I'm telling you to draw your sword. How? <laughs> I love these guys. These guys are awesome. Uh, will you stop? What fools? Haven't you begun to understand? The kingdom being ruined and us left in this state. Isn't it petty little battles like this that have caused it? Oh, and then they disappear. Believing in your friends and embracing that belief by forgiving failure, these feelings have vanished from our hearts. It all happened after somebody thrust open the doors of that stone tower. You who bring light into darkness. I am the king of Icona Kingdom, Egos Du Icona. The spellbinding that had been cast upon us was broken by that light which you carry. To return true light to this land, you must seal the doors of Stone Tower where the winds of darkness blow through. But Stone Tower is an impenetrable stronghold. Hundreds of soldiers from my kingdom would not even be able to topple it. It is far too reckless for one to take on such a challenge. And so... I grant to you a soldier who has no heart, one who will not falter in the darkness. Alright, so we have learned the Elegy of Emptiness. It's a mystical song that allows you to shed a shell shaped in your current image, and she sells seashells by the seashore. By playing the song while wearing masks to assume different forms, you'll be able to leave up to four empty shells, one for each form. This soldier who has no heart is your twin image, a shell of yourself that you will shed when your song commands it. They like using that SH sound, don't they? On my kingdom, shine the light of justice. There it is, shell, shed, shine, but... Yeah, so we've learned the Elegy of Emptiness and uh, also gained the ability to leave a, a rather strange-looking duplicate of ourselves. They all look pretty weird, if you ask me. So, And uh, like the, the little message said, we can use it in other forms in order to uh, sort of, you know, make a whole bunch of different duplicates, like the Deku, for example. And the reason I'm doing the Deku right now is pretty much because we're never going to see it. What we really want to use the Elegy of Emptiness for is to uh, make duplicates that will sort of hold switches down for us. And the Deku is a little bit too light to actually do that. So um, you can see it sort of left a, a little bit of a Deku form there, which is kind of interesting. And our Hylian form is still around. So um, obviously you can make it with all of your different forms. So there you go. Alright, so now we can uh, get out of here. I don't know if the Song of Soaring works in here or not. I guess it would, but I don't know. Um, nothing happened. Wow, okay. I guess it doesn't work. So we're going to kind of have to uh, make our way back out here manually, I suppose. So let's go through the door. And make our way back through the Redeads. I guess we could uh, show them dancing one last time, since I know everybody loves it. Hey, all right, there we go. You know, it's too bad you can't put on, like, Camaro's mask and dance with them, you know, then they would start trying to eat you, but whatever. And as we run through, yeah, you usually accidentally kill a couple of them, so oops, sorry guys, didn't mean to ruin your dance number, but... All right, so yeah, now that we've uh, gotten out of here, you can see there's actually a block. This is where that little opening next to the front gate that I talked about earlier, this is where that would lead. You kind of get blocked off by that thing there, so we can't really do anything about that, but... Alright, so now that we're done with this, we can use the Song of Soaring and make our way back to Iconic Canyon. Um, now, pretty much all that's left is to actually start the ascent towards Stone Tower, which is uh, actually the dungeon of this place. We've done a couple dungeon-like places, but none of them are actually the temple that we need to be taken care of. So, gonna head back out to Iconic Kingdom and uh, definitely start checking that out. 
And uh, in order to get to Stone Tower, we're going to put on the bunny hood to make it quicker. And um, it is actually a building that I've pointed out before. I mean, you pretty much get to it from right here. This is sort of like the central hub for everything in this area. You want to come up here and then turn right at the top of the ramp and avoid the Gwei. You can see there is a guy here sort of sticking out his tongue if you walk up it and go in the mouth. This is Stone Tower. Now, Stone Tower and the Stone Tower Temple are probably, um, if not the best designed temple in Zelda history, one of the best. Um, you can pretty much already see there are a lot of things going on here. We've got multiple levels. We're going to have to make a, a pretty steep climb. We've got some boulders falling off and magically crashing. Um, but this really isn't even a precursor of things to come. I mean, Stone Tower Temple in and of itself is, like, just so amazing. I can't even describe it with words, but... I believe we're going to save this for next time. I don't really want to start the ascent just quite yet, so... Um, we're going to stand out here. Next time, we will make our way up Stone Tower and then uh, start checking out the temple itself. Until then, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.